Hi, on this video I'll be painting the Tusk Boss on more Grunter. So to begin with I sub-assembled him or it. <laughs> and uh, this usually I keep the armor off, but uh, this shoulder piece here was um, attached to the leg. So I just uh, broke it off and I'll work around it. I also left the head off as well, so I can paint the tongue pretty easily. And also the bone areas. I left separately too. So the first coat of paint I applied was Mornfang Brown. Uh, I'm using an airbrush, but to be honest, you really don't need it for this one. It just saves time. You can use a really large brush. So in my other video for the yellow armor, I painted the whole model um, yellow, and then I painted the Mornfang like a, a Zenithal from below. This time I wanted to experiment and try um, trying it in the reverse way. So I tried the, Zenith, the dark Xenifall from below, Mornfang, and then later on I'll, like now, <laughs> I will use um, Aveline Sunset first from above to, to spray down. And I'm trying to keep the shadows as prominent as possible. However, when time needs, if I'm missing a part, I will kind of um, spray into the areas that are um, not, kept, not caught by the yellow paint. So I've tried this before, this technique without an airbrush, and uh, I use a really large brush, kind of like a makeup brush, and I dry brushed downwards. And it turned out pretty decent, I would have to say. So you don't necessarily need an airbrush for this effect. Um, but it's it's something interesting, it's something fun to try out uh, in your painting journey. You know, even though I, you know, I'm using airbrush now, I use it quite predominantly. Um, you can get by without one. And you, you, you know, you if you experiment and, you know, you're interested to improve, then you, you just learn to try new techniques with what you have you know or you know any way that suits you and then you might find it like oh I like dry brushing more than using an airbrush you know an airbrush is too fiddly or I just don't have the money to to buy one or I don't have the space um, so dry brushing is still your friend <laughs> anyway so I'm using a brighter yellow now and I'm really just catching the edges now, the, the sharpest corners. But actually saying that, I still went a bit overboard with it. So I'm not too happy with it. I'm doing the same thing here with all the uh, orc armor. Even the, the guys, there's two orcs on the side with big choppers. So, but don't worry, later on, I will, I'm going to try something else that will negate all these mistakes I feel so you'll find out and you know you can leave a comment and see if you think it looks better you know if you want to compare the last video's technique of yellow armor with this one uh, yeah in the comments just give me a message and see what you think as I said this video is kind of like an experiment on how a reverse xenifor would, would work Okay, so now I'm just touching up some of the armor and I'm still paying attention not to add too much of this bright yellow because then you won't see all the Aveline sunset. And actually on this uh, camera it, it does look pretty bright but in, in person once it kind of dries it does dull down a little bit. And don't worry if it's going over the fur and so on because when later on when we add some contrast paints and so on they actually kind of use this yellow as like a highlight it kind of brings out some of the fur and you know we'll be doing more dry brushing and highlights later on so here I'm adding some Aveline Sunset just to touch up some areas where I want to be a little bit darker uh, kind of like a mid-tone
So this is the other armor piece which goes on the head, the face mask. I really liked how this one turned out, especially later on when I place it on top of the head. It just looks really cool to have like this thick, um, rugged, uh, ramshackle type of armor placed on top of these orcs and their mounts. It just looks really fresh, threatening and um, intimidating and uh, it looks heavy, you know, like real plates and it's going to charge into armor and just destroy stuff. So now I'm going to use Night Quest of Flesh. Um, you can use other paints that are similar to this kind of brown. Um, this is the the base color for the skin of the um, of the flesh of the, the the mount. So I'll add this to the face and the legs. And surprisingly, this model doesn't have too much flesh. It's mostly fur. I think I seem to remember when I was painting the smaller pigs, the gore grunters, there's more fur, but I could be wrong. Maybe they have a, a, a little tail and, <laughs> and other parts. So yeah, this is a really nice... I was going to use Bugman's Glow, but it's a bit too, shall we say, pink. And I, I wanted to have a, like a darker brownie type of skin tone for the base color. And I'm just going over this, the tongue, even though the tongue will be a different color later with some different highlights. Uh, so yeah, just cover all the flesh areas with this paint. So now I'm using Bugman's Glow, and this is like uh, the next tone. I will pick out, like for example, these ears and like the eyebrows, uh, the the nose, the wrinkles. Oh, you know what I'm doing here? I'm painting the forehead, right? I'm you know adding lines, adding texture, but it's a waste of time. Can you guess why? That's right. I'm putting. A helmet on this pig, um, that piece of armor I was airbrushing earlier. So, and I just remembered, and I remembered it a bit too late. So when I finally put the armor on, it covers most of it anyway. Yeah. So I'm just, this is kind of like dry brushing now. The paint, there's less paint on my brush, and I just flick it and catch the raised areas. And a Cajun flesh tone. Using the airbrush here again, you can dry dry brush. I just felt like using an airbrush and I'm doing a kind of a xenophore um, spray on top of the head, uh, the back of the legs and um, anywhere else where I've painted the uh, flesh.
So now for the brightest highlight, Kisler Fresh. Now I do the same thing again, Xenophil. But I will also pick out certain sharp details, especially on the um, the ears and some of the light, as you can see by the lips, there's some creases of the skin. Um, I'll draw, I'll paint over those parts and even the tongue as well. Because what's good about contrast paints is, you know, you can add all these layers of colors and, and so on. And then once you paint over it with the contrast paint, it will pick up these colors, but it will change them a bit. And it will kind of save you a lot of work in terms of, you know, edge highlighting things. So I really love using contrast for fur, especially when it comes to um, painting armor. Uh, like this, uh, this kind of armor you can't really paint separately so I just, you know, I work around it. So Garak, Garak, Garagak? Yeah, Garagak Sewer. I use this brown quite a lot recently. It's pretty good for like, um, I use it on leather pouches and so on and I'm using it on the fur and I really feel after this part now like I, I, was, I felt like it looked very messy and I wasn't enjoying it um, I think we all have that moment where we're painting minis and there's that time where it looks a bit messy or rubbish and you know I want to give up but keep going and then uh, that's the fun part then because then it comes together it, it, it kind of frames this fur frames the yellow armor, so I've gone for a darker fur, so that the armor really stands out. And now I'm dry brushing over it. It's a really good and easy way. You know, I, even though I use airbrush, dry brush is a technique I love using and I find it so useful. Doomball Brown. I haven't used this paint in a long time. <laughs> but I really wanted to use a, a brown for the straps. But I didn't know. I, di I didn't want to choose a paint that was similar to the fur. So, uh, or oh, I didn't want to use black either. So I just went over all the leather areas. Of course, I will add some different paints to them later. But the base color was Doomball Brown, and then later on I can decide which color I'd like to add to them, or um, which highlights I would need. It does help put things into perspective. Now I'm onto the metal parts, steel as the base color. It's really good paint. I really love using this um, Vallejo paint. It flows really well. You need to keep shaking it though, I felt. Um, after a while it just thins out a bit. The, the particles separate a bit, so you need to keep making sure it's mixed up and it's well, it, you've got to make sure it's shaken very well, otherwise it'll come out a bit. It won't cover that well, it'll be quite, uh, yeah, it, it just won't cover that well. So you just shake it and make sure it um, um, covers well. So now I'm kind of doing a xenophil, not a xenophil, what, what do you call it? The tusks have a gradient where it, start, it can either start off light and then go dark, or you can have the dark bone from the bottom leading up to a brighter area so I just went on all I covered most of the bones with this color and now I'm using a shanty bone and I'm trying not to touch the bottom of the tusks again you can do this by say painting it but when you get to the bottom you can dry brush carefully so it doesn't cover the paint too much as you can see here and I'm doing a, a xenophore now on these bones I think looking back on it I could have just painted it up shanty or any of it you know reef bone or whatever and then I could have just added Agrax Earthshade and I think that might have been nice too but again as I said before I'm experimenting in this video a bit and if you like it then you can use it in your mini if you think you have a better way of doing it then you can just ignore it um, or even give me some tips as well in a video I'm always happy to learn new techniques and 
especially saving time. We have so many minis to paint recently. Steel. I'm picking out the metallic areas on the um, bone areas now. And I'll do the same on the, um, the orcs, the riders, the chains. But the thing about these minis I, f I find is uh, they look simple, I would say. But once you start painting them, you start finding different, like little artifacts on them, or trinkets, or plates. And you're just like, oh, there's so many details you have to think about. So for the art boys, the troops, I will also do this color scheme too. I really like the um, kind of metal silver faceplate. I just think it's a nice intimidating kind of look to them, especially with the bright yellow armor. So now I'm adding a shade, uh, but it's I've heavily diluted it just over the skin. Just filling it all down and wherever it pulls I move it around and I go as you can see here I'm going over the um, dark areas of the bone of the tusk and I stick it on there and then I drag it away from the white bone I drag it towards the gums so, and you know here I'm going uh, it's very thin now so then I start to move it around to the tips or where you probably see some shadows just, you know like where it curves but when the paint's thick I will push it as much as possible to the bottom and I drag it down to the gums and then when it thins I'll just move it around uh, to add some interesting colors or texture it's quite hard to explain but when you're doing it you can kind of feel where the paint is going just go with the flow <laughs> and uh, it should work you'll you'll pick it up for sure so after shading and um, tying all the colors together I go back with Kisler first and I just pick out the areas the sharpest points and again I'm gonna add some points to the head the forehead which are gonna be covered anyway by the helmet the head armor so just be careful about that you, you don't want to spend so long on areas which are going to be covered anyway So I've got thinned down Garak sewers again, Garahak, Garagak, I can't remember the name. And just like with the tusks in the beginning, I'm going over it all, but I'm using quite a lot of water. Like, so I put the um, paint on it, then I get some water on my brush, I clean it, and then I just um, start, um, I just start covering it and making it flow into all the cracks and the recesses. And then I add more water and I just start moving it around. So now I dry brush with Upshanti bone. Again, I've done this before with the tusks and other bone areas. So I'm just repeating the same technique again.
so now time for more contrast black legion i like to paint the uh, trousers or the pants if you're in america <laughs> of the orcs i just think uh, any kind of dark clothing is a really nice contrast uh, compared to the yellow and it also um, helps separate parts of the armor too so now i'm painting um, some symbols which are pre-printed and I'm also like there's these kind of like um, sharp bits of metal around the model and I just basically paint them black and try to break up all this yellow uh, armor you can also paint it dark silver if you wanted to you know you can vary it you know it could be ramshackled pieces of iron Play, uh, stuck together so this is how it looks I've done the tusks the uh, armor by the tusks I've glued on the helmet so basically it's all glued together now I've glued all the armor together I've glued the bone parts and now this is at this point I kind of felt like it was coming to where I want it to be so I use Upshanti bone again you can use uh, Wraith bone if you really wanted to and I'm just painting all the bandages and all the wraps. I'm now drawing lines on the teeth just to make them a bit sharper. And I'm also trying to pick out details on the bone as well. Just to really tidy it up and really frame it. As you can see here, and I'm using the side of my brush and quite smooth strokes just find it in areas to really make it look sharp and look a bit more finished nearly forgot the teeth as well so I'm just doing the same on the teeth painting them and adding some texture um, how to say you, so the teeth are a certain color now and I will paint upwards and have like little lines on the bottom of the teeth to make them a bit more discolored looking and then I also forgot to do the uh, head of the, the boss because he's he has a skull helmet uh, so I did that one and the uh, riders on the side they also need this and by doing painting what the way I'm painting it I'm painting it in a kind of you know doing all my metals first and I'm doing all my cloth first the armor first all this is saving so much time rather than spending so long finishing one part of the model and then moving on I'm just highlighting some areas I've missed like this nose ring So I wanted to go back to this model here, the rider, the tusk boss. I wanted to add some silver parts to his armor 
to further separate um, different parts of his armor and make it a little bit more interesting. These are the blades that are glued onto the tusks, and I did them separately too. I painted them silver first. This is the tongue. I'm adding this kind of pink to it just to make it stand out a bit, add a bit more interest to the mouth area. Again, Garagak sewers, and I'm just painting over the strap of the belt and also the um, so where he's sitting on now there's like a little piece of fabric maybe it's like a leather skin draped over the, the seat of the where, where the bone is and I didn't want to do that doom ball brown I wanted to make it a little bit different I wanted to make it dark so then it helps the model to be separated from the rest of the uh, the area where he's sitting. So this is what it looks like now, it's really coming together, uh, I'm really liking the way it's looking. I'm still not happy with the armour, the contrast between the shadows and the brighter areas, but I'll come back to that soon. So now I'm using Auric Flesh, because I want to paint the Auric's flesh. <laughs> So I'm painting them parts. Oh yeah, the rider, you've seen him attached, but I didn't glue him. Actually, you don't need to glue him if you don't want to. He slots in pretty well. Here is his face. I'm trying not to get paint on his teeth, just to save time. And then here is his tongue. I'm using the uh, Voluptuous, Voluptuous? No, Volup Volupus pink, is it? The contrast pink. Acrex Earth Shade. So this is shading all the bone areas. Just to I'm adding water to it, just to thin it down. And I'm just to tidy up some of the bone areas and also um, the metals. I'm preparing them for their highlight and also the cloth area behind the feet as well. Just, you know, anywhere that's missing that needs a bit of definition. Uh, I also painted this um, strap red contrast, and now I'm using contrast um, Agrex Earthshade to um, fill in the gaps and add some uh, shadow and definition to it. Also, going over the teeth as well, just to dull them down a bit, make them look a bit yellowy and dirty and to kind of fill in the uh, gaps too and also going over some of the metals well all of the metals actually
not too experienced with orc flesh, so I'm using a, a Fonia Green Shade, is it? I forgot the name. But anyway, the, the wash from Games Workshop. And now the highlight is Scarsnick Green. And I'm kind of just picking out the edge highlight. Just how you how I did with the um, pig's face. Same type of method of you know having a darker colour, a shade, and then like um, a lighter colour to pick out the raised areas. Using plague bearers flesh to um, add, to paint over the slime in the mouth, the saliva. I want it to look a bit infected. So now here's the new technique I'm trying: rust streaks from Vallejo. Sorry, not Vallejo. AK Interactive. I've varnished the model, so it's very shiny now, and I'm just painting over all of the yellow armor parts with this special rust pigment. So it's liquid form, and I'm just painting it on. I'm using an older brush, and this is also this is a um, alcohol base. This is you need al alcohol to remove this from the model. So it actually looks kind of interesting when I've painted the whole model with this color. I showed it to my friends, and they were like really curious. Um, what happened to this model? It was bright yellow and now it's all like a dirty, rusty looking um, scrap heap. So here's some white spirits. I got this from an art shop and I put it on a, um, what do you call it, a sponge? got the name of it now and I just nap the raised areas and then I start sliding it down but dabbing helps a lot and then I just pick out the areas where I intend to have the shadows and streaky parts and I really like it it's very um, it adds a sense of realism and it kind of makes the metal look thicker and chunkier and it, it in my opinion anyway it kind of adds a bit of weight to it and it looks a bit different than my the rest of my army but I'm tempted to go back to the rest of my army and add this step now where I varnish it and then I use this streak uh, rust streaks just to add that bit of extra intensity to the shadows um, please, just let me know what you think of this uh, technique this is how it looks. I've added a uh, matte varnish, not too heavy, to you know to seal it and cover it. And I'm really happy with it. I'm really chuffed with how this looks. Now, because I've uh, added matte varnish, I need to add some bright kind of metallic. So I'm using silver this time. I was using steel before. Now I'm using silver. I'm just picking out all the rivets. Uh, the chains, the blades, I'm edge highlighting the blades using the side of my brush and then I'm using the brush to kind of draw lines where that blade has been used and hacked away at things so the it will add a lot of shape and motion to it
I also added pigments onto the base. I won't show you how I did it, but um, I did sh record it in a different video. So, the end part is covering the base, the rims with black, and this is the final model. I'm really happy how it turned out. Uh, I learned a lot about it, and I tried pigments which I've never really used before, and it, I think it was a bit of a success. Let me know what you, what you think, and how did you find this tutorial, and I hope you liked it, and please feel free to subscribe and like the video if you want to see more. Thank you.